Okay, now what I've done is I've, uh, if I, I've taken our rotor off of this side. I've placed it directly on the drive shaft of our induction motor. I've increased the number of armatures, the number of coils on our generator to four. And what I'm going to do in this test is I'm going to show that uh, four coils will accelerate the system faster than a single coil. What I'm also going to show in this part of the demonstration is that when the coils are shorted out, when current is flowing in the coils, the system accelerates. When the coils are disconnected and the motor is left to run the system completely on its own, it decelerates. When the coils are engaged, shorted out, the system accelerates because the back EMF is causing the uh, rotor magnetic field to strengthen and the speed increases. Now, we recently had a, a report produced by Connectrix, a research facility formerly of uh, Ontario Hydro, and their report concluded that the motor capacitor in conjunction with the starting coil was the, the, the main factor that contrib contributes to acceleration. Now, I'm going to prove that that is impossible because the system does not accelerate until I, I short out the coils and when the coils are disconnected the system decelerates and I'm going to show that uh, next. Okay, what we have here again is our magnetic rotor that is directly uh, magnetically coupled to the uh, rotor drive shaft of the induction motor. We have our four coils and um, then we come over to our meter board. We have our motor current again. We have the output voltage of coil number one, coil number two, coil number three, coil number four, and again our tachometer uh, meter is here. What I'll be doing when we during the test is I will be shorting out each coil, inducing the maximum amount of back EMF into the air gap, and the system will accelerate. Now, what I will be doing in this test also is the system will accelerate, and then I want to uh, demonstrate beyond a shadow of a doubt that the motor is not able to accel accelerate the system on its own, and I will disconnect all the coils and the speed of the system will drop and when the when I disconnect all of the coils the 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 system will be operating under no load conditions and the motor will be driving the system solely on its own and you will you will notice that because there's no back EMF in the in the air gap no generator back EMF increasing the motors uh, rotor magnetic field the the rotor doesn't have the the motor doesn't have the capacity to maintain the accelerated speed okay i'm going to start the system now our system speed right now is 54 55 rpm 56 we're drawing 5.6 amps to our motor. We're producing 52, 51 volts, 74, 43, and 43 volts. Now I'm going to short out the coils. We're at uh, about 60 RPM there. It seems to be fairly steady. Short out all of the coils. And you can notice that each meter here is pretty much on zero volts and the uh, tachometer coil is reading 72, 73, 74 RPM. The motor current has dropped to 5.1 uh, amps and the system is accelerating.
we're up to uh, 96, 97 RPM. Just going to let it accelerate a little bit longer, and then I'm going to going to disconnect all the coils and uh, keep an eye on the uh, tachometer. Okay, I'm going to disconnect all the coils now. You can see that the coils are disconnected. We're on no load. Voltages 78, 134, 72, 77. And our speed is dropping to 95, 94, 93. Right now, the motor is turning the system. And it does not have the capacity to maintain the speed. I'm going to introduce back MF into the system again. And you can notice that the, the voltages are all zero. And uh, I've introduced back EMF into the air gap, and the system begins to accelerate once again. Right now, the motor current is at 4.55 amps. And the system uh, will continue to accelerate uh, Essentially, the feedback loop that's happening is the, the generator back MF is increasing, the rotor magnetic field is increasing, the speed is increasing, and uh, I'm just going to shut off the coils now and let it uh, let the motor do the work on its own. And you can see again clearly that that uh, the system is decelerating back down to its no load speed. It will continue to decelerate down to approximately uh, 50 RPM. And I'm finished. Okay, what we showed in uh, test number one, we showed a uh, non-magnetically coupled generator that was operating at a motor no load speed shown here and then what we did was we introduced uh, resistance into our coil we shorted out our coil and we, do, we, we introduced uh, the maximum resistance that we can for our generator and when we did that what we saw was the generator RPM slowed until the system completely stopped. Then what we did in test number two was we inserted uh, the ferromagnetic material between the motor, induction motor and generator. Essentially we magnetically coupled the generator to the induction motor. When we shorted out our coil again, instead of slowing down, as Lenz's law states, and the law of conservation of energy states, the system accelerated. Now in a conventional, uh, in a conventional generating system, uh, as the load increases, if you want to maintain the frequency of your generator output, you have to uh, offer more power to your prime mover. In the magnetically coupled system, uh, in test number two, if you want to maintain a certain frequency in, in these conditions, you have to reduce the power going to your prime mover. Uh, the open circuit test uh, shows an infinite resistance. We have maximum voltage, zero current, and no back MF in our air gap. When we short out our coil, we have zero to minimum volts being produced and maximum current and maximum back EMF in the air gap and maximum results for our uh, test scenario here.